Hello, welcome to Finishing Touch here on the State Soccer Network. My name is Riley James. Today we have a college soccer player right down the road from me in Lafayette, Louisiana. She plays for the University of Louisiana, the, the raging Cajuns from Folsom, California. I'm very happy and excited to welcome to the show Miss Ashley Newland. Thank you so much for joining us, and, and how are you? Oh, thank you for having me. I'm doing great. <laughs> no was all that today. information correct? What was Folsom, California? Uh, yes. The only thing that's slightly incorrect is I no longer play for the university. I finished my um, last season of fall of 2020. Yeah. Okay. So, former University yeah. of Louisiana Raging Cajun. Um, you, you get the, the nice hair to match too. I noticed that in some of the photos, I, the red hair is, was stuck out in the field. That's how I knew it was you. Uh, nevertheless, you, you said you had finished college. You had quite the college career that I'm excited to talk about and maybe a little bit beyond that as well. Uh, I want to start with kind of your senior year. You were a captain of the team and you guys went all the way to the semifinals of the Sun Belt Championship game. Can you talk about kind of how much work it took to get to that senior year and then scoring a goal in your final collegiate game. Can, can you kind of talk about that whole thing? Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of started from freshman year for me. Like my whole college career definitely wasn't an easy one. And um, I'm someone that when something typically happens that doesn't go my way, I use that kind of to fuel the fire inside, you know, to keep um, pushing. And I guess that just, my uneasy couple, three, four years before my last season really just had a lot of, I guess, hunger inside me to do my best my senior year. Um, and I wanted my teammates to do the best they could as well. So, I mean, just all of that. And then we had a great change in coaching um, my junior year with um, Lance Key and um, Steven Salas, who definitely changed the program completely. So, I mean they started that change and then you know the rest of us who were still there followed their lead and we just pushed each other and the goal I mean I say this all the time but it was and I know everyone tells me you shouldn't say this but it happened to be an accident on my end um but it was pure reaction and I in my head I was like oh I'm gonna pass the ball and then I guess my body took over to shoot and the next thing I knew was going in the goal. And it definitely made my college career one to remember because that was my only collegiate goal and it happened to be in the one game that mattered at the time and the last college game I ever played. So definitely it's still a, a replay that goes on in my head still to this day. No, it's such... Have you ever wondered what it's like to be an owner of a social media network? We have a very unique opportunity where we build you a turnkey social media website that is specific to a theme or niche that you are passionate about. Upon signing up, you'll become a part of our Social Titan community, which is made up of social network owners just like you. You can then share ideas and strategies on how to grow your user base and get more traffic to your website. But how will you make money? Once you have the traffic on your website, all you have to do is sell advertising to companies in your niche. Just three months ago, we launched a social network for soccer, and now that same website has over 60,000 visitors each month. That soccer website is also generating monthly income on advertising from soccer-based businesses. It's really that simple. Join our Facebook group today to learn how you can become a social titan. No, it's such a, a cool thing to hear first goal stories. I always ask about it. I ask Quinn Sullivan of the, of the Philadelphia Union about it. I ask Avery Howard of uh, University of Nebraska at Omaha about it. Like first goal story is my favorite thing about soccer. And the fact that yours was a mistake was uh, <laughs> even better. No, that's awesome. But it doesn't matter how it goes in. I've played soccer. I, I, I've covered the sport for six years. It doesn't matter how it goes in. Just that it oh, goes yeah. in. Oh, yeah. It, it's actually quite hilarious, too, because if you listen to the announcers, they're like hyping me up and they're like, oh, beautiful first touch, you know, watching, 
New one saw that the goalie was out, chipped the ball over, and they're just hyping me up in my head. I'm like, yeah, I didn't mean to do that, but, like, it worked. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with it. Like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you kind of took that and ran with it because I certainly wouldn't have told anybody. Like, yeah, oh, that's exactly yeah. what I meant to do. No, it's awesome. Oh, I that's just awesome. thought it was even more funny. I'm like, it, it just fits my story <laughs> anyways that it was an accident, but you know what? <laughs> yeah, you're you're a better person than I am. Um, I want to go back to, you said it was difficult for the first couple of years of your career. I want to give some context to that. So you only played in 33 minutes over two games your freshman season and then you had a had to do a medical red shirt the next year so 33 minutes your your first year in college and then sitting out your second year I mean that's not a great start to your college life how do you handle that in the moment you know you're young when you go into college you're you're not always like people aren't always the most mentally mature going into situations like that how did you handle it and how do you come out on the other side of that well, um, my whole soccer career actually is very consistent of being difficult, um, surprisingly. And I guess, so my freshman year, I came in and it was starting to be the, the peak of my soccer career when I came out of high school and I was starting to do really well. I think the commitment to college really boosted my confidence. And um, so I felt kind of on top of the world and I started my first game against um, LSU and I was the only freshman to start. And um, shortly after that, I had um, tore my ACL, MCL, and meniscus at practice. And so I was out the whole season um, for my freshman year. And uh, then my sophomore year didn't play at all because uh, I, I was supposed to take the medical my freshman year. And then sophomore, you know, my body just wasn't reacting the same way as it did before. Um, but I guess considering how I always had obstacles growing up with soccer, that it just really didn't phase me too much. I got upset when it had happened, and then I just I wanted to play, and like soccer is something I'm definitely passionate about. So it really just motivated me even more to keep going and keep trying. And then my junior year was a little rough with my coach. Um, I was playing well, and uh, they, we just, I guess, didn't see eye to eye, so I didn't play a lot my minutes started going down even more um he would actually warm me up for about 20 minutes and then bench me he would go tell me to warm up and I would warm up for about 20 minutes and then he would never put me in the game and that happened about every game so that was a little uh now I laugh about it it wasn't funny at the time but now I laugh about it and then um I uh I was uh, determined, I guess, to still come up on top. And then eventually we had the change of coaching, which was great because at that time I was considering to transfer because it seemed like my situation wasn't going to get better. And Lance came in and then, I mean, the rest has been history. I started every game with him and played almost every minute of every game. And my game got better as well. So I think it's just my whole soccer career has been filled always with obstacles and difficulties and every single one I've overcome and each one has gone a little bit harder, but I think because my past is just so repetitive of that, it just keeps pushing me towards the next goal in the future. And and we didn't talk about this, and I, I don't want I don't want you to get anything you don't want to get into. But you you mentioned earlier on in your life before college soccer, before you know anything else, you had some difficulty in your career, kind of getting it going and and having hardships. Can you dip into a little bit? A little of that can you share some of the story if you want to only i mean we didn't talk about that so i don't i don't want you to share oh, anything yeah, you don't feel no. comfortable no i'm totally comfortable talking about it um i with my i played club for a team um for eight years back home and it was uh like an up and down for a long time i never was the star player and i never was the worst player i kind of just wasn't average player that was there and my biggest struggle growing up was being consistent with my game and I've had some good coaches and I've had some not so great coaches and um, I faced a lot of like bench time or just being told that like I wasn't going to go to college at any D1 schools like I had a a coach tell me to my face my senior year I asked her for help um, with recruiting because it was towards the end of junior year and a lot of girls on my team were getting committed. They were getting offers, all that stuff was happening. And I had absolutely nothing going on and I asked for help. And she told me to my face that 
she didn't know how to help me because I would never go anywhere higher than a division two school at a 25% scholarship. So she didn't know how to help me. Um, and I just, I didn't really receive the help and guidance that I needed from my youth coaches too much. Um, and so I kind of had to do it on my own, but, uh, for me, it usually just gets me a little angry and then fuels, I guess, the fire inside. And I'm like, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I ended up doing that. But just things like that, um, that I faced a lot growing up on my uh, club teams and stuff like that. So you, you ended up playing at the University of Louisiana. And yes. I, I know you probably know this. Louisiana is not California. So how did you find um Louisiana and and ultimately kind of what led you to go there if you didn't have a ton of opportunities what led you to uh to laugh yet so um it's kind of crazy how it all had happened we were at a surf cup it's a really big soccer tournament in San Diego California and was uh, about July at the time so I was going into my senior year so this was pretty much the last opportunity I was going to have to play college soccer um, I had some interest from a couple smaller schools in California. Um, and I, my team at the time was, uh, we weren't the greatest. We weren't, um, the worst either, but we honestly should have lost all our games and been knocked out, um, the first round. And we had somehow kept winning and we were playing great. And we, I had the game of my life, every game we played and, uh, the old coaches at the time uh we're at for ul we're at the tournament and they watched me play and because we kept winning they kept getting more opportunities to watch me play and they really liked what they saw and they emailed me i came out for my visit and um i think it was either august or september i really fell in love with the look of the school i loved the red brick buildings the trees how they cascade over the sidewalks on campus and the swamp and I really did like the coaches at the time and I liked the girls on the team everything just seemed to fit really well and I did love how it was so different from where I was from um and I just felt like this was the place for me to be at and um I just decided to come here this question's for me um I'm from here I've lived here for 21 years did they re did they feed you at all on this recruiting trip any of our specialty foods, gumbo, jambalaya, etouffee, crawfish. What what did you eat? What made you fall in love um, with this place? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what we had. We went. To, I had a po' boy. I do remember that. Po I boys. went to Old Time, and I had a po' boy. Uh, we went to was it? They don't. They're not open anymore. But Randall's. Yeah, Randall's. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of what else. I don't. I never. I don't think I ever had like crawfish because it was. It was in like October or September right. so it wasn't like it was super season, good then yeah. it was in season and then I don't know if I had any A2 I can't remember I just definitely like came down here and I was like this is not what I'm used to but it was like there's still so I like I still say I'm like I feel like Lafayette if you're going to Louisiana yes New Orleans a tourist place but like Lafayette's its own place with like the culture and like Cajun country and I'm like I would have never came here if it wasn't for college and right. I love the time that I've been here and it's just I don't know everything about it I was like this is cool I like it I'm gonna stay here <laughs> right no I mean each of the four stops on I-10 you got Lake Charles Lafayette Baton Rouge and New Orleans all very unique in their own way but it's all still kind of the same thing and I maintain I've been all over the country covering soccer and covering sports the best food in the world right on right on I-10 so happy You've integrated yourself into the culture. I mean, how long have you been in Louisiana? Um, I will be about at the end of this like semester. It'll be about six years. So I've been here about five and a half right now. So, I mean, you've had enough time to kind of get accustomed to Louisiana. That's that's awesome. I'm so happy to to hear that you love Lafayette and you love the state. Um, that's that's fantastic. Nevertheless, we'll move back to the soccer. That that's what I get paid to do. Brief interruption, we are looking for advertisers for the State Soccer Network website and the app. You can advertise to over 2,000 daily users on statesoccernetwork.com and the SSN app. Plans start at $30 a month, but mention our show in the email and you will get one month of that free. Contact statesoccernetwork at gmail.com for more information. 
and back to the show. Um, <laughs> your junior year, you're coming off injury. You're coming off um, some, you know, problems within the team. You started all 18 matches and you, you had a hundred minutes against Appalachian State. Do you feel like that's kind of the turning point in your career? And 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 what was some other factors that contributed to the to you playing that well and playing that much? I think I had at one I think I had reached my point where I was like, I knew I had the potential and I knew I was good enough to compete and I knew that I should be playing. Um, I was working extra every single day. First one to get practice, to practice, last one to stay. I, I knew that I, I could compete and I proved it when um, Lance had first come. And then also with Lance and Sal, uh, I finally had two coaches who believed in me and saw the potential that was there. And that's something that I wasn't used to really. I had a, a very, very limited amount of coaches in my entire youth growing up who actually believed and saw potential in me and they both did and days or games that I didn't feel it they reminded me that it was there so I definitely think oh I definitely don't think I know like the change in coaching was something that also significantly improved and changed the way I played you you mentioned that you were considering transferring how close were you to actually leaving and going somewhere else? Um, if our old coaching staff was not going to get um, let go from the last season, because our junior season was, it was bad. It was, I think we won three games out of an entire season. And I knew that I was doing everything in my power to try and be better and play. And I'd go in and ask what I needed to do to improve. I would never complain about playing time. Um, I would ask. I would go and watch film. I did everything I knew I had, I could, and nothing changed in my situation. And I thought, well, if the coaches aren't going to leave, then I'm going to. And then luckily they did. And so then I was like, well, I'm going to stay now. <laughs> Something right. can get better. So. Yeah, no, because – the whole process of transferring, it's been a big thing in, in college sports the last couple of years. Um, that's a whole process to be able to transfer somewhere else. Like the fact that you were ready to commit to a entire leaving process to be able to get all your academic stuff transferred over and, and to be able to come into a new team and integrate yourself in their culture. I mean, that's a whole process. So I'm, I'm one, I'm happy you got to stay. I know, you, you mentioned how much you love laugh yet. And, and, and two, I'm happy you didn't have to go through that process. Cause I've talked to people that have gone through that and it, it's not fun. So, uh, I'm happy you had a great year that year as well. I mean, you, you stuck around and, and had a, a fantastic season, but there's something else I'm curious about. You also play for the San Antonio Athenians. Is that right? Yes. Uh, we interviewed your teammate, Helene Ferris on the show. You know, we, we had talked about that in the ramp up to this interview. Uh, balancing those two things has got to be very, very difficult. How do you how do you maintain your fitness level, especially with the grueling college season where you're playing two games in three days? How do you how do you maintain your health and your fitness? Um, so it's funny because I finished in fall of 2020 with my uh, Raging Cajun season and um, I was actually done. I was like, I'm done with soccer. I uh, it's been a great journey, like cleats are hanging up on the wall. Thank you. Like career, like let's go. I don't know what I want to do, but I don't want to do soccer. And, um, it was just one of those things that couldn't get away from me. I kept getting opportunities to play and one thing led to another. Eventually I found my coach gave me, um, the number to someone for the Athenians. And then I had to, uh, get back into shape in about, um, a month, month and a half, uh, to play summer soccer because I hadn't worked out for quite a bit. Um, I mean, it didn't take me too long to get back into shape. I'm definitely one of those people who's lucky that um, endurance and getting into shape is something that comes pretty naturally. And uh, I worked with my old strength coach here at the university. Uh, I went to play for the summer. And, um, I mean, we played where practices, we scrimmaged every single practice. So even if I wasn't in the greatest of shape going into the summer, I definitely was by the time we were playing games. 
and um, we'd play eventually we had about two games a week at one point when we were throwing in um, preseason games and stuff like that. So, I mean, during the summer, I didn't really have to try too hard. I just showed up for practice and played in the games, and I was in the greatest shape probably I've ever been in. Um, but now's a uh, got to get back into that shape for me because uh, this semester I just finished with my um, graduate school and I was working. So unfortunately I wasn't able to get too much uh, training in. So this is the the season right now before the summer where I have to put in that, that work to get back into a shape. And uh, I'm excited and also a little nervous because I know I'm about to get my butt kicked, but um, yeah, it's a, uh, I mean, it's just being consistent and uh going out and training and training hard and pushing yourself. And then if you don't have someone to, if you don't push yourself, you know, having someone else to push you because, uh, I mean, the summer I think is even going to be more competitive and, uh, like intense than it was last summer. So that means I need to, uh, work even harder to get in better shape and, uh, compete for this, uh, summer team. It's so hot down in San Antonio during the summer. That's gotta suck. Like oh, yeah. it's, it's hot like it's it's definitely uh, but i know you i know you're from california but like texas and louisiana heat no joke no joke i mean how do you oh, yeah. how do you do that because i've talked to a lot of dynamo players and a lot of austin players that had to deal with that summer heat and they it doesn't get easier so how do you deal with it i mean it's it's definitely another another game when that heat's on turf too because that just adds like ten degrees and Louisiana heat and Texas heat are two completely different heats. Um, uh, believe it or not, I would describe Texas being a little bit more dry because it's more humid here in yeah. Louisiana and I think the humidity makes it a little bit harder to even breathe. Um, but I guess playing for five years, I got used to playing in intense heats like we would have one o'clock games on Sundays in like 90 degree weather with humidity and we'd get water breaks I guess those make it a difference when they'd give you a water break halfway in between each half um I mean and I'm one that player that always has to pour water all over myself because I'm gonna overheat so I guess the water breaks we get and trying to manage on hotter game days knowing that try not to run as much if I can help it and maintain my energy because with that heat, it definitely zaps it a lot quicker, but water breaks and cool myself down, I guess would be my two main answers to tolerating it. Yeah, no, I've seen the Instagram post with the, with the water bottle up here. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, that's one of the best ones. Um, you, you finished up college. You're, you're playing for San Antonio you and I talked about it briefly before we got on air. What is what is next for you? What what are your plans in soccer? Because you said you were done, and now you're you're s- still going. So, what's what's beyond this? Um, the goal is to play professional. Um, I'm not going to be too picky. Uh, any opportunity to play professional is an opportunity I'm going to take. Uh, if I can be a little bit more particular, I would love to go international and just experience time outside this country because I've never been out of the country. And um, if I can be even more particular after that point, I would love to play in Europe. I just think European soccer is a very, very different soccer than American. And I think it'd be um, a challenge to try and get into that more technical um, side. And I just, I think it'd be an amazing opportunity and I would love to go there and play but at the end of the day professional soccer is the main goal that I would like to play sometime next fall I would love to be on a team one last interruption before we finish the show finishing touch is now looking for sponsors we have three ad spots as you saw today and 100,000 views the first eight episodes of this show it's only going to get bigger we thank you so much for the hot start that we've had and we want to advertise your company in one of those three spots. Contact State Soccer Network at gmail.com for more information. And please enjoy the end of the show. That's awesome. Thank you again so much for the time. You were fantastic. I do have one more thing. It's something we do with every single person that comes on the show, whether it be a coach, whether it be a professional soccer player, or whether it be, you know, someone who's had the career that you've had. Obviously a lot of hardships and struggle, but you still made it all the way through. If you could give some general advice to 
player out there who wants to be the best version of themselves, whether they want to play high school, co- uh, college, club, professional. What is one piece of advice that you would give to someone, say, 13 to 17 years old? One piece of advice that I would give. Um, I would say the the biggest thing is if you want something – bad enough and you're willing to work for it then there's nothing that can stop you from achieving it and but you have to put in the work um if you can do everything and anything in your body to achieve what you want then no matter how high or impossible that dream may seem you can definitely achieve it for sure well that's i feel like that's general advice for almost anything in life but especially for uh playing soccer at the highest level that you would want to be able to play at Ashley. I thank you so much for the time. I thank you for your, your insight and your advice. Um, good luck going into the summer season and, and we'll be watching out and see um, you playing in Europe, hopefully very soon. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely.